everybody, welcome back to another episode of Warp Just It Does SMP style mod in Minecraft. Uh, it's been a little while, I apologize, <laughs> but I finally have a chance to get a little bit of recording done, so I figured I'd go ahead and hop on and show you guys what's going on. Um, again, my apologies as always, I usually do uh, projects with you guys and actually show you some of the stuff we're doing and actually do it together. Uh, however, unfortunately, it's because, again, my life's been pretty busy right now, I've had a few opportunities here and there to uh, be able to actually record for brief moments between the kids and family and <laughs> to-dos and everything else. So, um, unfortunately, what little time I've had to play has not been conducive for actual recording, so I've been able to play, just not record it. So, that said, I do want to get a chance to show you what's been going on here. The server's been hopping, so we got a lot of things going on right now. So I just want to get a chance to kind of walk through some of this. <gasps> Look at my board! So many things not on the wall anymore. Uh, yeah, no, I actually didn't get anything done. <laughs> I actually converted them all to books. So to make my life a little bit easier now, I've actually decided to go ahead and I convert these to books here so that I can actually get a kind of a checklist going. Sadly, we don't have the version of Bibliocraft where we actually have a checklist. But I figured I'd go ahead and write everything down here. And this way I can go through and see what I want to do and kind of have a little ongoing list going on here um, and, uh, be able, ooh, and be able to uh, take care of it. Hello there, big block. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much where things have been. Um, I got a lot of books here. Everything's uh, kind of categorized now. I got City Hall here, some final little bits and bobs and whatnot. This is moving along very nicely. Um, I've also got ones called City Hub, and that's basically, uh, um, oh, come on now. Ah! <laughs> Ooh, well, there we go. Um, basically, what I've done is I've taken kind of the general idea of what I want to do with the hub city that we're staying in. And then when that something gets achieved, that checklist gets started, if you will, like, for example, the Visio Center, then I'll give it its own little book to go by. And I've got a few spare books over here I can use to make more notes with. So let's go ahead and take a tour here and see what we can see um first off like i said people have started to come back on and start playing again even turgo and heather for those of you who don't know uh turgo is one of the uh uh well turgo and heather both are founders of our wonderful illustrious group and turgo is kind of our lead sysadmin heather uh his adoring wife um she's kind of our our designer so i like for example i went through i showed this a while ago but i actually designed the the basic structure of this fine city hall, but Heather's the one who goes through and actually does the finish work, all the detailing. Um, almost every wall in here is micro blocks, so that's how much devotion she has. Uh, Turgo put the uh, dome in, actually the correct dome. I did a dome the wrong way. We actually used one of those little uh, builder maps to help us out this time here. So we got the dome up. Um, we're going to do some more work with it. Now, I have no idea what we're going to do with the dome just yet, and... Uh, Quite frankly, I'm just not going to get into it. i got too many things on my plate right now. So. <laughs> but there you go. we got a dome. Yay. looks nice. All pretty. Um, we also do have the rooms kind of laid out here. Actually, matter of fact, I'll show you real quick. We have got both Turgo's and my office is now done. So we were just in mine. Now we're in Turgo's here. Ooh. Nom nom time. Um, so these are all done. This game, we need to put some furniture in, dress it up, get ourselves a secretary. We'll be good to go. Um... We also got uh, the other side done here. Down the other side, we've got the main uh, town hall. So we'll put a whole bunch of chairs in here. Have a little pedestal or a uh, podium for people to stand at. And Heather even got all of the bathrooms done. <laughs> Which I find kind of humorous. Um, so she's been working hard on this and getting things done. Uh, what else has been going on around here? Well, as, as you know from our last uh, video... Uh, Tox has taken over. Just ignore that part right there for a moment. Uh, <laughs> ooh, man, I've had no luck with my uh, frames loading very well lately. Uh, Tox has been working on the uh, rail yard. We showed you a little sneak peek of the um, uh, underground here. He's still working on that. Nothing really new to report other than the logic is getting put in. Um, so we're working on that. We've had a few glitches with the trains, and that's been kind of bothering me because it looks like the trains themselves keep catching on the um, holding tracks. So we're trying to get that sorted out. Hopefully we'll get that uh, figured and going. Um, guys, so much has been going on lately. Oh, VSD has helped me 
with the power plant. Now, I give you guys a sneak peek at all this here. This is actually a little substation where I'm actually going to be pulling the power out of the power plant at 512. And I'm actually going to be bumping up to 2048 so I can run over the high power lines and over the top. Now, yes, these are lossy. That's why I'm bumping it up to uh, 2048 so there's a little bit less of an impact. But they look better. So it is an aesthetic thing. If you have enough power, you know, who cares? Let's go ahead and do it. Make it look nice. So I'm going to build a big tower here, a big tower there, and have a substation over there. I think I, think I told you about that. These uh, little uh, units here, some of them are cosmetic. Some of them are actually functional. So I'll give you an example here. This one, I'm going to sneak in here. I've actually got an adjustable transformer. So I have all the power feeding in from the turbines into here. And uh, then this steps up and hands it on out. Speaking of turbines, ooh, so much has changed. Uh, we did a little upgrade uh, to our power system. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you that first. Uh, I actually decided to put a, a, uh, a new charging system in. This is a temporary location. I'm just testing it out. But some of you, anybody who's ever watched some of my older videos, I did a how-to or a little tutorial on this style here. This is a quad charging pad. And what you do is you put a little couple pieces of iron bar up here. And that way, when you step onto it, all four pads charge. Now, these pads are top tier above lapis. These are actually fission charging pads. And they are all maxed out with 12 overclockers apiece. What does that do for you? Well, if you go ahead and watch my power up in the top left here, I am wearing a Gravis suit. So to give you an understanding and idea here, you can see how much power I hold. As soon as I step onto the pads here, they all light up and look at that thing go. Now, that may seem a little slow, but again, this is a Gravis suit. This thing has got redonkulous amounts of power. So... <laughs> Look at that. That's nice to have. And these pads themselves, you can see, 150 mil buffer. So, huge thing. So, the problem with these things is because they have so much room in them, they pull so much power to refill themselves. I step on this thing, charge up, and then all of a sudden you see the AE start blinking and turning off because it was drawing too much power. <laughs> so, we had to go ahead and fix it. Uh, so that leads us to the next thing. One of the reasons why I uh, had talks take over on the rails is because I need to get other things done. There's a lot of logistics, a lot of other fun stuff going on. And one of the things I wanted to get done here was a power plant. So I pinged uh, Viesti because she's my little studious B, and she agreed to help me out. And what we did here is we actually went ahead and bolstered, if you will, the uh, power plant. God, uh, mine's having the worst luck today. And we actually created... A second floor. Da, da, da. So, yes, we had 12 turbines before. Now we've got an additional 16 Railcraft turbines. All punking out uh, 200 EU a tick. Um, we also did a little facelift on them. I, some of you might have already caught this, but we used to have a little light on the back of the uh, turbines, letting us know when turbines needed service. We went ahead and updated it, and now we've actually got lights built into the face. And as you can see here, we have a green light and an actual red light. So if we go to the top here, you'll see this guy needs service right here. If you're ever curious about how these things are actually wired, well, now's a good opportunity to find out. <laughs> so we actually have a whole bunch of things packed in here. I've got the power coming out. So we've got one MFSU now that uh, both turbines feed. So this MFSU is basically getting fed 400 EU a tick, which is as close as they can get it uh, to a proper uh, 512. And they've got the red net on top here feeding from a gate. Now this little gate, if I can get down there, is a little gate that kind of senses these two turbines. And when either one of them has a turbine that's low, like this, it's going to sense that head on. And when that happens, it's going to trigger these lights. So that's how that works. Now, in addition to that, I have also done a bunch of work here to build a platform. We haven't figured out what we're going to skin just yet. I kind of like that stuff, but I don't know. Maybe something new and different. And as you can see, we do the steam lines in here. And we've got a whole bunch of steam lines all wrapped up in red. I've done the blue lines for the water return. These turbines do actually do a water return. It's not mandatory, but I wanted to have some fun and play around with the logistics. So I decided to go ahead and lay them out here. And these actually do return back to the boilers, which I'll show you in a second.
So big giant honking steam line with micro block. I'm going to fill it in here to make it a little more roundy. And then they break off to all the different turbines upstairs and downstairs. Now, turbines. Oh, the wonderful things. This is going to be it for them, however. This is the max we're putting in. I'm going to go ahead and skin this whole place. And uh, basically just go ahead and... Uh, call this plant done so if we get to a point where we actually somehow manage to overrun this plant again uh to draw too much power then we're going to look into an alternative uh power plant that we can set up to help supplement we might do great tech uh gas turbines or we might just go ahead and look into uh nuclear fission good old classic ic2 um and play with that a little bit so what is what is powering these guys? We've got 16 new turbines. How do you take care of those things? Well, glad you asked. <laughs> there you go. Big, fat, honking, giant boilers. Well, not really. Okay, so they're cosmetic, just like the turbines. But I like doing cosmetic. So here we've got a whole new stack of... Uh... <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to choke and die here. Uh, these are high-pressure turb uh, high turbine, high pressure boilers from Railcraft. These are the largest size you can get here. Now, again, just like before, we've done a split of liquid-based or liquid-fueled uh, boilers. And now on this side here, we'll go around the back side here, uh, we also have the solid fuel boilers being fed by charcoal. So there you go. Just like before, we're all set up so that we actually have the... Uh, Boilers split between the two different types. That way, again, if something ever happens and we lose charcoal production or lose liquid production, we're not completely hammered. So that's kind of a nice thing. And then we're doing the face on here. Now, this is just the beginning of it. We're doing the face. And by the way, this is like retardedly expensive because all this stuff here, in bar. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, it's a composite material used, uh, made with, um, oh God, I think. Think nickel and yo oh boy. Uh, I forget now. God dang it. <laughs> Anyways, it's not cheap. It's a pain in the butt to make. VSD has been uh, having the AE system automate and, and produce this, but it has basically drained our coffers. We actually ran ourselves dry on nickel making all this, and we're not even done yet. Um, I did a sample face here is what we're going to go with, and all of this is all carpenter blocks. What I did is I actually did, uh, you start off at level here, with a regular carpenter's block, and then I'm stepping up really gradual. So I want to have a nice little curve to it, but not too much. And to do that, what I've done here is actually carpenter's hatches. Oh, a little secret there. Look at that. Uh, then you go into the carpenter blocks at half slabs. And the carpenter blocks, if you have it skinned and then you hit it again, it puts a little, little plate on top of it. So we went through and did the hatches, half slab, then the uh, little plate, and then again, half slab hatches, etc., all the way to the very end here. So it has kind of a nice little gentle curve. So I'm going to do this on both ends, so front and back. It's like a proper boiler. And then I'm going to dress it up. I'm going to put some wires going into it and little control boxes and etc. So we're going to make it nice and neat. Uh, in addition to all of that, of course, we're going to go ahead and actually get the entire building skinned. Uh, I'm going to go with a classic brick Good old red brick style. Uh, for anybody who's seen any of the work I've done in the old TBA server, um, the old storage facility, it's going to be basically kind of like that. I really like that look. It's very classic. And since this is, this is a steam-powered plant, I think kind of that old classic brick look is probably going to be the best look for it. Put some stacks in, you know, a few other things here. So that's the plan for this area here. I even decided to go have a little fun here and decided to put a little pump station in, so... Now we've got two big old pipes sucking water out of the bay into a little pump station. I'll have a little um, uh, tank in here to hold some excess water just in case. So this supplements the return from the uh, turbines. The reason why I did that is because with this setup, the boilers are always running 24-7. There's no two ways, two bits about it. They're always running. Well, the problem is turbines only produce water if they're actually on. So if you get a situation where nobody's drawing power and all of a sudden... The boilers are running and the turbines aren't, you're kind of hosed. So that's how that works. So I decided to do is supplement it by running these little tubes in here and just to be silly and make them almost uh, pseudo functional. I said I hit some uh, 
uh, Aquis Cumulus in there. So that's that. Now there is a lot more to be had here, so I'm going to go ahead and take off and fly over to the new areas and show you what else has been going on, and I'll be back. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I went ahead and ran over uh, cross town here. Went back to the good old familiar workshop over there in the church. And I went ahead and did a whole bunch of work in the residential district. Now, if anybody remembers, uh, this little front area here is where I had the uh, Christmas tree at one point, And Rue's house was there until you blew it up because it doesn't like bugs. If you haven't seen that episode, by the way, the prank episode, go back and watch it. It's hilarious. Make sure you watch Rue's reaction to it. I was in hysterics. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of work with the residential area. We've actually started laying out roads and actually putting out plots of land. Now, as the server evolves and people start coming on board, which they are, and I'll get to that in a minute, we decided to start laying down plots of land primarily because we want to actually have people, when they join the server, go ahead and actually uh, build on a plot of land in Hubtown. From there, they can take off, go to the four corners, whatever the case may be. But we kind of want this to be kind of their initiation, their trial, if you will, to come on the server, build a little thing in, in, in the main hub town, the spawn town, before they take off anywhere. Uh, one of the people is uh, Snow Wolf, we talked about before. I still have yet get a chance to do any recording with him, sadly. But it'll happen eventually. Snow went off the deep end. <laughs> he picked out a nice little... little tiny, small, 30 by 30-ish little plot of land, and then he just went up and up and uh, up <laughs> so this is gonna be snow wolf's little uh humble home but i went ahead and went through the back here we've got yankee's old property right here and i went ahead and went around it decided to put in a little alley i need to get the rest of the road down here somebody started laying right down for me but they put a sidewalk in and you just you don't put sidewalks in an alley it just doesn't work that way um but laid that out laid out my property i went ahead and took a big bigger chunk than I anticipated just so I had some room to breathe and grow and put some other buildings on um, so I've got my little my little home my little home sweet home I need to work on some more um, so I got a little property here it's kind of close to the back but then it kind of goes off to the side and my property connects to that little alley so I'm probably going to put like a little maybe a matching garage on the back kind of facing out to the alley who knows um, but in addition to that I went ahead and expanded out this uh, area way far out so we've got there's my house. There's Yankee. Uh, we've got a couple of little properties here, one in the corner. We've got a little funny-looking one out here. It kind of wraps around and back that way. I decided to have a little fun. It's definitely this boring-ass square properties of equal size everywhere. I want to have a little variant because people want to have unique properties or a bigger size or a smaller size. It depends on who you are what you want to do. So we've got that one there. We've got this one here, a little long, narrow one here. And then we've got one over here. I didn't want to put anything back here because I want to kind of keep this open since this is right next to the uh, visitor center on the other side of town. Um, so this property here, then we've got a nice little hill, small hill property right here. And then there's this property here, which you can see is kind of narrow, but it's actually got one of those um, Thomcraft spawners inside of it. So yeah, if you want that uh, property, it's got some pre-made uh, spawners in there and wisps and all that. Have fun. <laughs> Got a couple big properties back here, and then it goes all the way back over this way. Got a little hilly one there, nice little corner lot right here, which uh, I believe Sap actually took. Oh, no, he took this one. So Sapper is another new person who's joined our server. Yay! So Sapper CS has joined us, and he has taken up this plot here. He's going to be building a little property on this. Um, we also got uh, Cryatic joining us. Cryatic is actually uh, the brother of Yankee Vader. So Yankee's brother is on with us, along with uh, Sapper and the Snow. We just growing like crazy. We growing like weeds around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's wonderful, though. It, it's so great to see the service are coming alive. We've actually got active, avid server as of late. And everybody here has been just bust and hump lately getting things done uh as i said i've been doing all this work here we got a couple big properties on the back side here you can see spawn hiding out right behind there so that's the residential for you uh, so that's that's the big news here now the other thing that's uh, kind of cool is we actually have dynamaps yes so if you guys want to see what the little uh, our little humble world is looking like, you are more than welcome to uh, hop on to our uh, website and take a look at Dynamaps. Um, the Dynamap address, uh, it depends on, 
I think you have to sign up on the website to actually be able to see it. So I apologize. I'm not really sure why that got set that way. We might change it. I'm going to talk to Turgo and see what we need to do. But uh, basically, long story short, we have a little, little, little Dynamaps. So you can actually look and see the world. Uh, we've got this place filling out nicely. Um, oh, I completely forgot. I have also specced out the commercial district finally. And come right around here. And as you can see, there's the old bug pest control place from the prank. And you can see a bunch of little plots. These are like 20 by 20 plots. So there you go. Now, in addition to that, I've also decided to put in a new building in this area. I figure it's about time we had mail from forestry, so I need a place to sell mail from. So there we go. <laughs> this is going to be the new post office. I'm still working on it, so we're going to do a little work here. But we will get this done. So, uh, anyways... So yeah, so that's about it for there. There's lots of good news going on. VST is working on um, uh, Arabian Nights Town, as she puts it. It's her magic town. And then about another uh, total of like 2,000 blocks away from here. Uh, Seshi has found beautiful, beautiful location for Mining Town. So she's going to be setting that up. And then I also have a secret project heading up north. I'm going to tell you guys about it sometime soon. <laughs> Anyways, uh, again, guys, I'm so sorry. This is just a whole bunch of talky, looky, looky uh, things. I do want to sit down and actually do some focused uh, videos showing you the more intricate detail and actually uh, do some projects with you. A lot of stuff I've been doing is cosmetic. It's kind of boring to watch. I really don't want to bore the crap out of you, so <laughs> I've been trying to kind of get that stuff done off uh, off camera. And again, I just don't have a lot of opportunities to record right now. I've got kids, and kids are loud. <laughs> but I am getting my office moved to a discreet location soon, so I can actually do recording when I want to. So, yay! Good news, good news. Um, so, yeah, look forward to that. As always, we certainly do appreciate uh, you guys uh, enjoying the videos. At least I do. Um, so please, 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 please feel free to uh, hit the like button right down there. As well as leave a comment if you like. Now, I just certainly do love the comments on the YouTubes. Um, but likewise, if you really want to have a conversation with me or with any other uh, BRGers, please feel free to head on over to BottleRocketGaming.com and go ahead and sign up on our website there. There is no restrictions to sign up and become a BRG website member so you can talk to us. Um, it's the best way to have a dynamic conversation. You guys can give input, ask questions. We'll be happy to respond to you in that regard and uh, have a little uh, active dialogue. Uh, likewise, I've said this many, many times before and it's it, it has not changed yet. We are are a whitelist server however we are always looking for new interesting people to join our wonderful server so if you are interested bottlerocketgaming.com slash forums look in the forums you will know where you need to go go ahead and sign up and then go ahead and apply if you want to get on the minecraft server and we'll go ahead and take a look at the application and talk with you and if uh as i would say if you're a good fit and uh, for us and we're a good fit for you we'll go ahead and get you added on here and have some fun so that's it for now. As always, I appreciate the time, and I certainly do looking forward to doing a lot more as time becomes more free for me. So for now, take care. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Bye!